Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about maternal effect. Taking the example of shell coiling in Limnia peregra, which is a type of snail. We have discussed about extra nuclear inheritance or cytoplasmic inheritance. This extra nuclear inheritance or cytoplasmic inheritance is also known as uniparental inheritance because the transmission of the traits or certain characters takes place through only one parent. That is only one parent is involved in transmission of certain phenotypes or traits. There are two types of the uniparental inheritance. When the transmission takes place to the mother, it is known as maternal inheritance, which is most common. And when it, is when it takes place to the father, then it is known as paternal inheritance. Female gamete, which in most of the cases is large, larger in size, fuses with the male gamete and it produces embryo. Female gamete is larger and it is the main source of cytoplasm for the embryo or female gamete provides the cytoplasm. Now let us see maternal inheritance. When the cytoplasm is transferred from the female gamete to the embryo, then transmission of the extranuclear heredity determinants of a trait or the determinants responsible for a trait also takes place through the maternal cytoplasm or female cytoplasm. This is known as maternal inheritance. Once again, what is maternal inheritance? Transmission of extranuclear heredity determinants. Extranuclear means which is not in the nucleus, which is present in the cytoplasm. So the transmission of extranuclear heredity determinants of a trait or heredity determinants that are responsible for a trait through maternal cytoplasm or female cytoplasm. So in the cytoplasm, cell organelles are also present. Among them, two are the most important, mitochondria, which is present in all species, and chloroplast, which is present in plant species. And why it is important? Because these contain their own DNA known as mitochondrial DNA and chloroplast DNA. These DNA also control certain traits in the offspring or in other words certain phenotypes. We have discussed the extra nuclear inheritance or cytoplasmic inheritance by mitochondria taking the example of petite mutant in yeast and by chloroplasts taking the example of experiment done by Carl Correns in Mirabilis Chilapa. You can refer my previous videos to understand these. The link is given in description box. Today we are going to discuss about another term that is maternal effect. When any phenotype of offspring is the result of nuclear genotype of its mother. That is, phenotype of the offspring depends upon the genotype of its mother is known as maternal effect. And how it is controlled? Those phenotypes are controlled by the female cytoplasmic factor that are encoded by its nuclear genotype. This is the cell. This is nucleus and this is cytoplasm. So in the nucleus, nuclear genes are present. These encode for certain cytoplasmic factor or protein. And the cytoplasm along with the cytoplasmic factor is transferred to the embryo or the offspring or progeny. So these cytoplasmic factor control the certain phenotype or trait of the offspring. So let us understand it once again. When any phenotype of offspring is the result of nuclear genotype of its mother. Those phenotypes are controlled by the female cytoplasmic factor that are encoded by its nuclear genotype. This is known as maternal effect. 
no paternal genetic influence there is no genetic influence of male gamete or the father because the cytoplasm comes from mother or the female gamete it doesn't comes from father or male gamete in most of the cases so what we can conclude that genotype of mother is equal to phenotype of offspring or in other words phenotype of the offspring depends upon the genotype of the mother not the genotype of itself and genes are inherited as mendel's laws but is visible as phenotype in the next generation after the one in which a genotype is found suppose the genotype for certain trait is present in the f2 generation so the phenotype is not visible in the f2 generation but it is seen in the f3 generation so the phenotype is seen in the next generation hence it is known as delayed effect we will understand it by taking the example of shell coiling direction in snail limnia peregra and here there is two types of the shell coiling seen one is right handed also known as clockwise it is known as dextral and the genotype on which it depends is capital dt the other is left handed or sinistral it is anti clockwise and the genotype is small dd here capital d is dominant and small d is recessive here the parent dextral female is crossed with the sinistral male during the gametogenesis female gamete and male gametes are produced this female gamete has cytoplasmic factor responsible for the dextral shell coiling in the f1 generation what we get all dextral and the phenotype of this f1 generation is already decided depending upon the genotype of the mother which is dextral now it is self fertilized dextral female capital d small d is crossed with the dextral male here during the gametogenesis female gametes are produced and both the female gamete has the cytoplasmic factor which is responsible for the dextral shell coiling because the genotype of the mother is capital d small d this is the male gamete then the fusion of the female and the male gamete takes place and what we get all the offsprings are dextral here if we see so these are consist of the dominant capital d so from mendel's law it can be dextral but this is recessive so it should be sinistral but what we see that this is dextral because the phenotype of the offspring does not depend upon the genotype of the offspring but the genotype of the mother and the genotype of the mother is capital d small d hence the shell coiling is dextral then it is self to obtain f3 generation capital d capital d female is crossed with capital d capital d male all are dextral because mother is dextral capital d small d female is crossed with capital d small d female here again all are dextral because the mother is dextral this can be understood as earlier because the female gametes consist of the cytoplasmic factor responsible for the dextral shell coiling and hence all the offsprings are dextral similarly here also this dextral male is crossed with dextral female and hence all the offsprings are dextral but here the sinistral female is crossed with sinistral male so what we get sinistral offspring because phenotype of this offspring depends upon the genotype of the mother and the genotype of the mother is small d small d and hence the offspring is sinistral so what we get in the f3 generation the dextral and the sinistral phenotype in the ratio of 3 to 1 which is similar to the mendel's monohybrid ratio but but this ratio is not seen in the f2 generation where the genotype for this ratio is present that means 
it is seen one generation after the generation in which the genotype is present. The genotype for the ratio of 3 to 1 is present in F2 generation, but it is expressed in the F3 generation. Hence, it is known as the delayed effect. Now, if we see the reciprocal cross in which dextral male is crossed with sinistral female. During the gametogenesis, male gamete and female gamete are produced. This female gamete does not has the cytoplasmic factor for the dextral shell coiling. Hence, in the F1 generation, the offspring which we get is sinistral because the phenotype of this offspring depends upon the genotype of the mother which is of sinistral type. Then this F1 offspring is selfed and similar to as discussed earlier in the F2 generation we get all dextral offsprings. In the F3 generation we get the dextral and sinistral in the ratio of 3 is to 1. This is dextral and this is sinistral. So what we see that this 3 is to 1 ratio according to the Mendel's law should be expressed in the F2 generation but it is expressed in one generation after that is F3 generation. So it is delayed effect or it is known as delayed effect. This is all for today's video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.